Hello, welcome to Training Tuesday. I'm Rob Evans from the Warrington Training Centre. And today what we're going to look at is frost protection for a monoblock heat pump, whether it be glycol or antifreeze valves. When we look at monoblock type heat pumps, what we've got contained inside the heat pump is system water because the system water, whether it's going through your radiators or whether it's going through your hot water cylinder, comes from this component inside here, the condenser. Now in the event of a power outage and there is no electricity supply to the heat pump, it needs some form of frost protection because if the water was to freeze inside the condenser, then potentially it could split and damage the heat pump significantly. Now, at Baxi, for our heat pumps, monoblock type, we recommend one of two methods of frost protection. Now, they've both got their advantages and disadvantages. The first one that we're going to take a look at is the use of glycol. So in our primary water or system water that's going through the radiators, we add on a solution of glycol which give us frost protection down to around about minus 20. Now, when we add glycol into the heating circuit or to your system water, what happens is we change the viscosity of the water. So it means that the specific heat capacity is reduced. So in effect, it means that we lose around about 5% output from the heat pump because we've got glycol in the system. Now the glycol, once it's in the system, provided it's not drained down, will stay in there permanently. So basically, once it's been installed into the system, all that needs to happen is it needs to be checked annually to make sure it's still at the right levels of concentration. Now for that, what we use as part of the service is a refractometer. So a refractometer will allow us to check the level of concentration of our glycol mixture and top it up as necessary. So that is one method. Another method that we recommend is the use of an antifreeze valve. Now, an antifreeze valve would require a pair fitting on the flow and return outside next to the heat pump. Now, the way that an antifreeze valve works is, is when the temperature of the system water begins to drop, once we go below three degrees C, then a little waxy type element opens inside and it begins to release system water. So the same water that was in our primary system, so our radiators and hot water cylinder, with just normal inhibitor inside, will now begin to leak out. So as the pressure builds up inside because the water is beginning to freeze, the antifreeze valve releases that water to prevent a, a, the appliance from freezing up. So we need one on the flow and on return. So whether we use glycol or whether we use antifreeze valves, we've got frost protection. Now, the advantage of an antifreeze valve is that if the customer decides to drain down a radiator because they want to paint behind it or replace it and forget to put the inhibitor back in, then we've still got frost protection inside. Whereas if we drain down part of the system with glycol in, if that person doesn't check the glycol level again, then it can leave the heat pump unprotected from frost and can damage the actual heat pump. Either way, we need to consider the advantages and disadvantages. So your antifreeze valves can be left a fit and forget, but if it drains down, will require the system to be topped up by the customer or by an engineer. Whereas the glycol, once it's left in, if it's drained down, we've got no protection on the heat pump. So you've got a choice of both. Either way, a heat pump, monoblock type, needs some form of protection. For further information, then what you can do is contact your area sales manager, or you can go to the Baxi website, baxi.co.uk forward slash training.